All right, page 98. Before we do that, let's have the Haredi uh, Mechasher. I'll sing the first stanza in Hebrew. And uh, can you join me in English? Haredi, Haredi, Haredi Mechasher at me. But don't you show how much I hereby join myself to the Master, Yeshua, the Messiah. The righteous one, the bread of life, the true light, the source of eternal salvation for all who hear him. Like a branch that remains in the vine, may I remain in him, just as he remains in the Father, and the Father in him, in order that they may remain in us. May the grace of the Master, Yeshua, the Mashiach, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit abound to us. Amen. Amen. Page 98. Ain kamoha bali madovanai, but ain kamama seheka, ma kutana kuka lahami, um shataka the kodor vador, adana hai mele, adana hai mala, adana hai bok le lahum bayet, adana hai bohos le amahitain, adana hai barek et amoha shalom. There is none like you, Adonai, there is nothing like your deeds. God, you will rule eternally. Your kingdom lasts for all generations. Adonai rules, Adonai rules, Adonai will rule forever and ever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with peace. Merciful Father, favor Zion with your goodness. Reveal the walls of your slain. For we trust only you, ruler, God on high, sovereign of worlds. Whenever the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, Adonai, and scatter your enemies. May those that hate you flee from you. For Torah shall come from Zion, the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. Blessed is the one who in holiness gave the Torah to Israel. Page 101. Praise be the name of the sovereign of the universe. Praise be your crown and your place. May your love for your people Israel last forever, and may the salvation of your right hand be revealed to your people in your holy house. Grant us the goodness of your life, and accept our prayer with mercy. May it be your will that we be granted a long good life, and may, have, may I be counted among the righteous, so that you will have mercy on me, and protect me in all that is mine, and all that belongs to your people Israel. You are the one who nourishes all and sustains all. You rule over all. You are the one who rules over earthly rulers, and sovereignty is yours. I am a servant of the Blessed Holy One. I bow before God, and the honor of his Torah at all times. That the human do I trust, who do I the angel, but the God of heaven, who is true God, his Torah is true, his prophets are true, and he multiplies deeds of goodness and truth. In God do I trust, in God's holy honored name I speak praises. May it be your will that you open my heart to Torah and completely enter my heart's desires to those of your people Israel for good, for life, and for peace. Amen.
Shema Israel Adonai Elokeinu Adonai Echad Shema Israel Adonai Elokeinu Adonai Echad Echad Elokeinu Gadol Adonai Nu Kadosh Shemo Echad Elokeinu Gadol Adonai Nu Kadosh Shemo he called Can you see it? We don't have any children today. Um, no. I mean, okay, okay, yeah. That's not what I meant, but yes, we can bring her up. <laughs> you know what? Yes, that was cynical. You can bring her up. I don't suppose you want me giving her honey, do you? Not yet. <laughs> Why don't you show her our sefer? This is the Torah. The law of Hashem is perfect in every way, given right to us from Hashem on Mount, Sh uh, Mount, Mount Sinai to Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu. And as you grow older, you will come to love the Torah as well, just as your parents do. Do you have any blessings or something you want to say? Not right now. <laughs> All right. <coughs> May he help shield and save all who seek refuge in him, and let's say amen. amen. As there's no Cohen, arise, Gabriel, but an angel. <coughs> and actually, I suppose I should be the one saying this, but it is okay. Um, Blessed is he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people, Israel. Okay. I'll say this one actually. Um, no, no, go ahead, you can say it and do the blessing. <laughs> so today's reading comes from Bereshit, chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Bereshit, chapter 1, starting in verse 1. Now Shem said, May light be, and there was light. Amen. Okay. 
ברור אתה אדוני אלוקינו מלך העולם אשר נתן לנו תורת אמת והיה לנו אתה ותנחינו ברור אתה אדוני נותן את התורה אמן May he who blessed our fathers, Avram Yitzhak Yankov, bless Gabriel ben Angel, who has been called in honor of the All Present, in honor of the Torah, in honor of the Shabbat. As a reward for this, may the Holy One blessed be He, protect and deliver him from all troubles and distress, all infections and illness, and send blessings and success to all the works of His hands. Together with all the house of Israel, His brethren, let's say, Amen. Amen. So let's go ahead and have the translation here. And I'll say this. It's always been my dream, my dream, that one day we have seven Hebrew readings here, all you know, out of the, out of the Sefer. Um, and so if anyone here wants to learn a portion of the parasha, even if it's like four or five lines, that would be amazing. And the invitation is always open. Anyone beginning? Yeah. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was uh, unformed and void. Darkness was in the face of the deep. Uh, and the Spirit of God hovered over the surface of the water. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called it light day, and the darkness called night. So there was evening, and there was morning one day. God said, Let there be a dome in the middle of the water. Let it divide the water from the water. God made the dome and divided the water under the dome from the water above the dome. That is how it was. And God called the dome the sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. We're going to begin the next reading in verse 14, following the Ashkenazi tradition. God said, Let there be light, and in the dome, the dome of the sky, and divide the day from night. Let them be for signs, seasons, days, and years. And let them be for lights and delights, the larger light to rule the day, and the small light to rule the night, and the stars. Over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw that it was good. So there was evening, and there was morning, a fourth day. Fourth day. All right. Next one comes in verse 24. We're going to read through verse 26. God said, let the earth bring forth each kind of living creature, each kind of livestock, crawling animal, and wild beast, and that is how it was. God made each kind of wild beast, each kind of livestock, and every kind of animal that crawls along the ground. And God saw that it was so. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, and the likeness of ourselves, and let them rule over the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the animals, and all the earth, and over every crawling creature that crawls on the earth. The next one is chapter 2, verse 4. Here's the history of the heavens and the earth uh, when they were created. On the day that uh, Adonai, God, made the earth and heaven, there was as yet no wild bush on the earth, and no wild plant had yet uh, uh, had as yet sprung up. For Adonai, God, had not caused it to rain on the earth, and there was no other uh, mm -hmm. cultivate, uh, uh, no one to cultivate the ground. Rather, a mist went up from the earth, which watered the entire surface of the ground. The next one is in chapter 3, starting in verse 22. And between these readings, we've had the fall of Adam and Chava. Adonai God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing good and evil. Now, to prevent his putting out his hand and taking also from the tree of life, eating and living forever. Therefore, Adonai, God, sent him out of the garden of Eden 
to cultivate the ground from which he was taken. So he drove the man out, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden the caravine and a flaming sword which turned in every direction to guard the way to the tree of life. The next one is chapter 5, starting verse 1. Looking at the genealogies. Here's the genealogy of Adam. On the day that God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created them male and female. He blessed them and called them Adam, humankind, on the day they were created. After Adam lived 130 years, he fathered a son like himself and named him Seth. After Seth was born, Adam lived another 800 years with both sons and daughters. In all, Adam lived 930 years and then he died. All right, and our final portion today is in chapter 5, starting in verse 25. We're talking about Methuselah, the father of the Lamech. Methuselah. Uh, well, that's Methuselah. Okay, yes. lived 187 years and fathered Lamech. After Lamech was born, uh, Methuselah lived 782 years and had sons and daughters. And all of Methuselah in all, Methuselah lived 969 years, then he died. Right. Lamech lived 182 years and, uh, and fathered uh, a son whom he called Noah, uh, Noah or Restful. Uh, he, um, for he said, this one will comfort us in our labor, in our hard work we will do with our hands. Uh, to get what comes from the ground uh, that Adonai cursed. After Noah, or Noah was born, Lamech lived 595 years and had, some, uh, had sons and daughters. And all Lamech lived 777 years, then he died. Uh, Noah was 500 years old and uh, fathered Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And because I can, and I think we'd, we'd be greatly amiss if we missed it, I'm going to have one more Torah reading today. And so I'll just go ahead and say the blessing real quick. Baruch Atah Adonai, Elohim HaKalam, Asher Baruch HaRabban, Yom Yikot Amin, Medad HaTon, Yom Yikot Amin, Baruch Atah Adonai, Tartain HaTorah. Amen. By the Hashemayim, by Aretz Vukotzvaam, by Kol Elim, by Yom Hashvi, Mikol Malachta Asher Sa, by Yisbok by Yom Hashvi, Mikol Malachta Asher Sa, by Verek Elim by Yom Hashvi, by Kedush Shatov Kipah Shabbat Mikol Malachta Asher Barak Elim by So. Thus, heaven, thus Hashem created the heavens and the earth. That would be the beginning of chapter two. All right. Baruch Atah Adonai, Elohim Ha'olam, Asher Natan Lanu, Torah Te'emet, V'chayet Olam Natan V'dekeinu, Baruch Atah Adonai, Me'otein HaTorah. Let's go and have a word from Robert. And Robert will be reading to us out of a new book in the commentary set. Well, not new, actually pretty old at this point. Depths of the Torah, but we're moving over to a new edition of it. Um, I highly recommend these commentary sets if you want to go deeper into each and every portion. Um, they are a little bit expensive, but if you're a Torah Club leader, you actually get them for free. So we have a few leaders here, and I want you just to just go ahead and um, consider maybe getting a few of these sets if you can. Revelation means to reveal or to lift the veil. Torah reveals Hashem. Ordinarily, people refer to the Torah as God's law. Instead of beginning with a list of laws and commandments, the Torah starts with the story of creation, the story of Adam and Eve, the story of the patriarchs, of their children's sojourn in Egypt, and of the birth of the nation of Israel. Does that sound like law? No. Obviously, the Torah contains much more than a legal code. The Hebrew word Torah does not mean law, it means instruction. Torah is more than just law, and it is more than just instruction. It is primarily a revelation. Prior to the revelation of Torah, human beings might have deduced the existence of a creator, 
but our knowledge of the Creator would be limited to inferences taken from observation alone. The Torah introduced Hashem to the world. He disclosed, he disclosed Himself to His creation within it. And when He revealed Himself to mankind through the revelation of His Torah, it was as if He declared, Allow me to introduce myself. I'm God. That makes Torah a benchmark against which all subsequent revelation must be checked. Divine revelation may be progressive as the prophets reveal more about God and about His plan, but subsequent revelations cannot contradict or supplant the initial revelation. We cannot use a later revelation of God to supersede an earlier one because that would deny his integrity and his immutability. In other words, the God who revealed himself in Torah is the same God who revealed himself in his blessed son, Yeshua ben Nazare. The New Testament does not supplant the Torah. God has not changed his mind, nor has he changed. He has not gotten soft in his old age. <laughs> he is the same. He is unchanging, and he is unchanged. <coughs> this is a very intense week for many of us. Um, uh, people asked me this morning how I was doing. I said, well, I saw my family get slaughtered on the television. And they said, your family? Oh, no. And I said, the house of Israel is family. We're really one soul that breathes through many. And so with that understanding, it's an incredibly intense week for many of us. Many of us, like myself and many members of my family, we've kind of had a stupor this week, I feel. And so it's good to be able to say the Birkat Hama, uh, ha, sorry, the Birkat Hagomel, the Birkat Hagomel, and just reflect on the good news. Not the stories of loss, but the stories of healing and recovery. Because this is the Shabbat. This is a time for healing, it's a time for wholeness, it's a time for peace. And I've seen over the last week, I'll share some good news real quick. I had two non-Jews come by just to express their solidarity and their, their, their broken heart over what they've seen happening to the Jewish people. And that was just, just random people off the street. Um, I take that back. One, we had a connection with, but once again, came by just to kind of cry. And the other gentleman, he's never been here before at all. And then before the Shabbat, and I should have replied to this email, this is my fault, um, a pastor uh, actually wrote to us and said that him and his church, they stand behind us and they stand behind Israel. And um, I haven't, obviously once the sun sets, it puts a delay on a lot of my messages to you. And sometimes things get lost from one side of the week to the next, but I'll be sure to reply to all these messages and say, thank you for your support. Um, this is a time where all the followers of Mashiach can unify. Um, and we can all agree where we stand on Israel and where we stand on the importance of the people of Israel and the land of Israel. So that said, let me ask you now, Rekat HaGomel, is there anyone here who has suffered from, uh, recovered from a serious illness, returned safely from a long journey, or survived any kind of danger, including childbirth? From Alabama. <coughs> no issues. No issues. Wonderful. Praise for you, God, and our God, Lord of the universe, who has kindness for the undeserving, 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 who has kindness for Good news in general, then.
Oh, John. And so that story shows us the tragedy of the situation, that he would rather see her dead than living on as a slave, as a hostage. Um, and while we can be glad with the father that she didn't have to suffer, at the same time, we're going to pray in the next week we get to see miracles that are more positive. And I hope that next week we're going to be able to come back with more stories. What's that? My uh, niece turned one today. Your what? My niece turned one today. Your niece turned one. Yes. Wonderful. We, um, we've had two births here recently in the last year. And uh, I guess we'll be coming up on one-year birthdays pretty soon. <laughs> Wonderful. Anyone else? I, uh, um, I spoke to my brother, uh, Shemuel and Darius. And they're about eight miles from Gaza, so uh, it's going to be fine. That's wonderful. And um, I'll say this about all my friends there as well. So far, no one has been hurt. Um, Yohanatan, uh, who you might know as Nate, he's, he's, he's fine. Um, he's blogging again, so he's alive. Um, who else do we know that's connected to this congregation? Boaz and Amber? Last we heard, they're still fine. Jeremiah has been deployed, um, but I think that uh, if anything happens, we'll hear about that. Um, and I have a few friends over there that are all still good, um, both Israelis and Palestinians. So, I mean, when you look at how many people live over there, a thousand people is hugely disproportionate, but at the same time, the odds are you're not going to know someone personally who's been killed. But that doesn't lessen the pain for those of us who do know someone who's been killed. And that doesn't lessen the pain for those of us who are directly tied into this conflict. And while I may not know anyone, I may not have any friends, I have had students who are Palestinian, and I am afraid for them. Because I know many of them had to check, travel through security checkpoints every day just to get to school. <laughs> and that would put them right in the line of danger. And so... The more people you know, the greater the risk, you could say. And I'm seeing people over there take both sides. Um, and of course, my friends are mostly pro-Israel, but I am seeing a few people say, hey, there is, there's wrong on both sides of this equation. And so we can pray for peace and for the peaceful people on both sides. Well, of course, at the same time, I'm mostly, of course, praying for Israel. And the fullness of our restoration. Page 108. We're going to have some healing scripture, and then we will have um, prayers for healing. Hey, okay, our healing scripture. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I didn't realize there was nobody here hardly. I'm always facing this way. Okay. Um, my healing for you today is from Matthew 9. Um, I guess I'll start at 18. While he was saying all this to him, <clears throat> The ruler came and bowed down to him, saying, My daughter is dead by now, but come and lay your hand on her, and she shall live. And she arose and followed him. His talk ones, too. <clears throat> um, and see, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the deep, the deep, deep of his garment. For she said to herself, 
If I only touch his garment, I shall be healed. But Yeshua turned, and when he saw her, he said, Take courage, daughter, your belief has healed you. And the woman was healed from that hour. And when Yeshua came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a noise, he said to them, Go back, for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And this report went out into all of the land. And when Yeshua passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have compassion on us. And when he came into the house, the blind man came to him and said, Do um, you believe that I am able to do this? But they said to him, Yes, Master. And when he touched their eyes, saying, According to your belief, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Yeshua strictly ordered them, saying, Let no one see, let no one know. But when they went out, they made him known in all that land. And as they were going out, see, they brought him to a brought to him a man dumb and demon possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the dumb one spoke, and the crowds marveled, saying, It was never seen like this in Israel. And on page 109, May the holy blessed one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and heal. What's the point? Well, Patty, Patty. Francisca. Francisca, Johnny, Johnny. Can and I say, uh, my my brother Johnny, that has been on our prayer list for for a while, quite a while. They found another tumor. So Johnny, mm -hmm. and well, let's put a few more people. Uh, Gabriel, Yonatan, uh, uh Janelle, Tammy, Rick. Heather, um, and the Russell came to Sally's father, Valerie, um, and of course little David along with them. We hope we see them very soon. May the Holy One give them support, courage, determination, and patience of spirit. Grant them physical and spiritual wholeness. May God and kindness strengthen and heal them. Daily body and soul together with others who are ill. Let us say amen. 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 Page 110. Hear their voice, O oh God, when they call. Be gracious to them and answer them. In your hands, soul of all living things, in terms of now, to evade those distress. Grant them patience, faith, and courage, and never let despair overwhelm them. Be with them in difficult times, and help them to face anxieties with confidence and hope. Grant them of your healing power so that in vigor of body and mind, they may return to their loved ones for a life of blessing and sustenance. So them to live, God, and give them their strength. We're praising you, God, and you'll be sick. Page 112, Kati Kadish. Yikada, Vikada, Shame, Rabba, Mati Barak, you're taking Likma Kote, Bachaya, Kona, Yoha, Makon, Ukaya, Deko, Be Israel. Bahagala, Bahagala, Vishmakari, Vimru, Amen. Yehe, Rabba, Mibarak. Lahome Yamaya Yiparak Yiparak Bishvach Bipar Yiman Bina Say the Yita Dahar Bita Lay Bita Shmini Kucha Rehu Let a Law Make Bread of Shirata Jews Bekata Venek Mata Da Amen. Page one hundred four. Page one hundred four. May God's great name be made great and holy in the world that God created according to God's will. May God establish the divine kingdom soon in our days, quickly and in, and in the near future. Let us say, Amen. Amen. May God's great name be praised forever and ever. Blessed, praised, glorified, and raised high, honored and elevated be the name of the Holy One, Holy Blessed One, far beyond all blessings and songs, praises and comforts, which people can say. And let us say, Amen. Um, give me one moment here. Who's going to hold? Uh, Nick, could I borrow you? And uh, Christian, I'll borrow you. Is that Tatara? 
Vizot a Torah, a share some Moshe, Lifne Bene Israel, Ab Yadana, Biad Moshe. It's Torah which Moshe said before the Israelites to ask God's word by Moshe's hand. What's that? Well, that's happened before. We have uh, metal rods and everything now, so that won't happen. Ya la 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 ya la la it is a tree of life for those who hold on to it. Praise our peace. today comes from 1 Samuel chapter 20. We'll begin in verse 18. Praise you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen good prophets and was pleased with their words that were spoken in truth. Praise are you, Adonai, who chooses the Torah and Moses, your servant, and Israel, your people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. Samuel 20, verse 18. Yonatan said to him, Tomorrow is Rosh Kodesh, and you will be missed, because your seat will be empty. The third day, hide yourself well in the same place as you did before. Stay by the departure stone. I will shoot three arrows to one side as if I were shooting at a target. Then I will send my boy to recover them. If I tell the boy, they're here on this side of you, take them, then come. It means that everything is peaceful for you as I lives. There's nothing wrong. But if I tell the boy, the arrows are out there beyond you, then get going because Adonai is sending you away. As for the matter we discussed earlier, Adonai is between you and me forever. So David hid himself in the countryside. When Rosh Kodesh came, the king sat down to eat his meal. The king sat at his usual place by the wall. Yonatan stood up, and Abner sat next to Shaul, but David's place was in him. <laughs> However, Shaul didn't say anything that day because he thought, Something has happened to him. He is unclean. Yes, that's it. He isn't clean. The day after Rosh Kodesh, the second day, David's place was empty. And Shaul said to Yonatan his son, Why hasn't Yishai's son come to the meal either yesterday or today? And Yonatan answered Shaul, David begged me to let him go to Bethlehem. He said, Please let me go, because our family has a sacrifice in the city, and my brother demanded that I come. So now, if you look on me favorably, please let me get away and see my brothers. That's why he hasn't come to the king's table. At that, Shaul flew into a rage at Yonatan and said, You crooked rebel, don't I know that you've made this son of Yishai your best friend? You don't care that you're shaming yourself and dishonoring your mother, do you? Because as long as the son of Yishai lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be secure. Now send and bring him here to me. He deserves to die. Yonatan answered Shaul, his father, Why should he be put to death? What has he done? But Shaul threw his spear at him, aiming to kill. Jonathan could no longer doubt that his father was determined to put David to death. Jonathan got up from the table in a fury, and he ate no food the, the second day of the month, both because he was upset over David and because his father had put him to shame. The next morning, Jonathan went out into the country at the time he had arranged with David, taking with him a young boy. He told the boy, Now run and find the arrows I'm about to shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy reached the place where the arrow was that Jonathan had shot, Jonathan shouted at the boy, Isn't the arrow beyond you? Jonathan continued shouting after the boy, 
quick, hurry, don't just stand there. Jonathan's boy gathered the arrows and returned to his master. But the boy didn't understand anything about the matter. Only Jonathan and David understood. Jonathan gave his weapons to his boy and said to him, Go, carry them to the city. As soon as the boy had gone, David got up from a place south of the stone, fell face down on the ground, and prostrated himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept each with the other until it was too much for David. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, because we have sworn, both of us, in the name of Adonai, that Adonai will be between me and you, and between my descendants and yours forever. Praise are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, rock of all the worlds, righteous in every generation, the faithful God who says it and it is done, who speaks and it is fulfilled. We now have a portion in the New Testament. The reading this morning is from the Gospel according to Matthew. That's Matthew's Gospel. Again, we're reading in verse uh, chapter 24. We've read from 24 and 25 several times lately. And this is very pertinent scripture. And we look at what's transpiring today in the nation of Israel as well as in this world itself. Matthew 24, for those who'd like to follow along, I'm starting at verse 29, and I'll be reading through verse 36. That's Matthew 24, verse 29. But immediately following the trouble of those times, the sun will grow dark, the moon will stop shining, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky. All the tribes of the land will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with tremendous power and glory. He will send out his angels with a great shofar, and they shall gather together his chosen people from the full winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now let the fig tree teach you its lesson. When its branches begin to sprout and leaves appear, you know that summer is approaching. In the same way, when you see all these things, you are to know that the time is near, right at the door. Yes, I tell you that this people will certainly not pass away before all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away. But when that day and hour will come, no one knows, not the angels in heaven, not the Son, only the Father. All God's words are truth and righteousness. You are faithful, out and I are God, and your words are trustworthy. Not one word of yours is ever taken back unfulfilled, for you are a dependable and merciful ruler. Praise for you, Adonai the God, who is dependable in all your words. Have mercy on Zion, for she is our life's home. Save the humbled so quickly in our day. Praise for you, Adonai, who causes Zion and her children to rejoice. Cause us to rejoice, Adonai our God, with Elijah the prophet, your servant, and with the kingdom of David, your anointed. May he quickly come and gladden our hearts. May no stranger sit on his throne, and may no others inherit his glory. For you vowed to him by your holy name that his light would never be extinguished. Praise for you, Adonai, shield of David. And for your Torah, and for the worship, and for the prophets, and for the Shabbat day that you gave us, Adonai our God, for holiness and for rest, for glory and splendor, for all these, Adonai our God, we thank you and praise you. May your name be praised perpetually forever. Praise for you, Adonai, who sanctifies the Shabbat. Continue on page 121. We do two prayers each Shabbat. And these are words that we can either repeat, as we said many times, or we can pray. That choice lies with us. Our country stands in grave need of prayer. 
I don't want to be political and I'll never attempt to be political, but I do need to tell you this much. Our country for the past few days has stood rock solid with Israel. And I appreciate that with all my heart. But word has already begun over a fourth of the congressional distribution of one particular party, and I'll leave that up to you to decide which party, is already pressuring President Biden to pressure Israel to put off any invasion into Gaza. They claim humanitarian reasons. There may be some of that involved. I'm not going to say that there can't be, but I'm not going to say that that's all either. The Almighty made a promise to Abraham when he first called him. We find it in Bereshit, chapter 12, verse 3. And he said to Abraham and to his descendants, those who bless you, I will bless. And those who curse you, I will curse. To fail to bless the people of Israel, the chosen ones of Yaakov, is to invite disaster. I ask you to turn, if you haven't already turned to 121, and not simply repeat these words with me, but pray these words with me. Our God and God of our ancestors, please accept the mercy of our prayer for our land and its government. Teach our leaders the values of your Torah. Help them understand your rules of righteousness so that our land may provide peace and tranquility, prosperity and freedom. I do not, God of the spirits of all flesh, send your spirits to all the inhabitants of our land and by love and brotherhood, peace and friendship, among all the nationalities and faiths that dwell in it. A group from their hearts any hatred or enmity, jealousy or rivalry, to fulfill the earnings of your children and delight in its honor, and who desire to see it be a light for all the nations. May it be your will that our land will be a blessing to all the inhabitants of the world, and that friendship and freedom will reign between them, and that the vision of your prophets will soon be fulfilled. Amen. And page 123, a brother wants to say some words. We don't usually have any form of this prayer in Hebrew, but I want you to hear the first two lines, because this is a beautiful song. And if you look on our Facebook page, you'll actually see we posted the full song, and you can find other versions on YouTube. I want you to hear just the first two lines, because we sing the first lines again and again. It sounds like this. Avinu, Avinu, Sheva Shemayim. Avinu, Avinu, Sheva Shemayim. So for Israel, the go alone, the new, the new, Sheva Shamayim. So for Israel, the go alone. I want you to hear it because in the future I might be coming in here and singing the first handful of lines because it's a beautiful song. Um, it's about four minutes long, and so I don't think we'll ever come in here and sing it all before we say the, the English. But we only have to use these words when we petition to Hashem for mercy, and we're appealing to Him as a father. Zor Yisrael, well, that's the rock of Israel. So we're acknowledging His strength and His power before we say the hello, the Redeemer. It's Redeemer. And so understand what we're acknowledging here are three functions of God. He is the Father in heaven, He's the rock of Israel, and its Redeemer. And then we say, Barak et Medinat Yisrael, bless the state of Israel. 
So we recognize the three functions, father, um, rock, redeemer. There could be something I could fish out that I, I don't think I will say. Then bless the state of Israel. Avinish the Shemayim, Zor Yisrael, the Golo, Barif, and Medinat Yisrael. Let's go and pray this. Page 123, a prayer for the state of Israel. The latest word that I have is over 1,300 are dead in Israel. That number includes at least 40 Americans, either just Americans or American Israelis, Israeli Americans. Over 100 have been taken hostage and hauled into Gaza. Babies and toddlers have been beheaded and left to be found. The enemy is not human. This is subhuman. Israel needs our prayers. And again, we have the opportunity to either repeat these words or to sincerely pray these words and to seek the blessing of our own other in heaven. Our Heavenly Father, the rock of Israel and the Redeemer, bless the state of Israel, where the first flower of our redemption, show your great loving ways and spread our pursuit of your peace. Send your light and truth to its leaders, ministers, and advisors, and guide them rightly with your good advice. Throw into the hands of the defenders of our holy land, and lead the God to deliverance. Crown their efforts with victory, grant us the land, the life, and the eternal happiness in which it happens. And let us say, Amen. On page 124 and 125. Gabriel, if you bring me the uh, Sefer Torah in just a moment, um, when we're done with this first paragraph. He writes on the Hananka, the night Elohim of Ahem would say, You, Shit Kadesha Lenu, Ed Hanko Desh, Azeh, Latova, the Libraf, the Libraka. May be your will and I, God and God, our ancestors, to renew this month for us for good and for a blessing. Grant us a long life, a life of peace, a life of goodness, a life of blessing, a life of good livelihood, a life of physical strength, a life in which we have reverence for God and a revulsion for sin, a life in which is free of shame and reproach, a life of wealth and honor, a life in which we have a love for Torah and a love for God, a life in which our worthy heart desires will be fulfilled. Amen. Selah. May the one who worked miracles for our ancestors and redeem them from slavery to freedom soon redeem us and gather our exiles from the four parts of the earth. All you Israel friends, and let's say Amen. 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 May the one who worked miracles for our ancestors and redeem them from slavery to freedom soon redeem us and gather our exiles from the four corners of the earth. All the Israel of friends, and let's say Amen. Are you with me? May the blessed Holy One renew it for us and for all God's people, the house of Israel. For life and peace, amen. For joy and gladness, amen. For redemption and consolation, and let's say amen, amen. amen. Page 128, the hallelujah to our deny. Um, Gabriel, um, Mike, would you please hear this? Ya Hallelujah, Abu 
A psalm of David, a tribute to Adonai, mighty ones, a tribute to God, glory and strength, a tribute to Adonai, the glory of God's name. Bow before Adonai in the beauty of holiness. Adonai's voice is over the waters, the God of glory thunders. Adonai's over the many waters. Adonai's voice sounds with power. Adonai's voice sounds with beauty. Adonai's voice breaks cedars. Adonai shatters the cedars of Lebanon. God makes them leap like a calf, Lebanon and Syrian like a wild ox. Adonai's voice carves out flames of fire. Adonai's voice makes the desert quake. Adonai makes the desert of Kadesh quake. Adonai's voice causes deer to give birth and strip the forest bare. In God's sanctuary, all speak of God's glory. Adonai sat enthroned at the flood. Adonai's enthroned is ruled forever. Adonai will give strength to God's people. Adonai will bless God's people with shalom. Peace. Page 134. Whenever the ark, would, whenever the ark rested, Moses was saved. Return Adonai to the millions of Israel. Rise up Adonai to your resting place the temple. You and the ark of your strength. May your priests be clothed in righteousness and your faithful sing with joy. For the sake of David, your servant, do not reject your anointed one. I have given you good teaching. Do not leave my Torah. It is the tree of life for those who hold on to it and those who support it are happy. Its paths are pleasant and all its ways are peaceful. Return us to you, Adonai, and we shall return. Renew our days as the days of old. That's Kayin Therefore the Torah is holy, the commandment is up, holy, upright, and pure. Contentment awaits those who hear the word of God and observe it. The only wise God, the only wise God, Yeshua the Messiah, Yeshua the Messiah, be glory forever, be glory forever, be glory forever, forever, amen. Yeshua HaMashiach, Adonai. Yeshua HaMashiach, Adonai. Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, Adonai. Ben David Melech Yisrael. Ben David Melech Yisrael. Ben David Melech. Ben David Melech. Ben David Melech Yisrael. Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai 
So I don't know if it carries, but I, th I think it does. I suspect it does. But I don't know if it carries for those of us who are joining us online. Um, but there's kind of a heaviness in the room today. And in the past, whereas I kind of said, let's alleviate that, I'm not going to alleviate that today. It would not be appropriate. It would be sacrilegious to those who have passed. And so I'm just going to let it stay. Um, and let's use this to address the ugliness of life. You see, I'm not here today to talk to you about the state of Israel, Medinat Israel, um, as the song we just read said. Um, I'm not here to talk to you about statehood. I'm not here to talk to you about, um, you know, about Netanyahu or all of the, the various promises that could be associated with the state. Or I'm not here to talk about any of it. What I'm instead here to talk about today is the simple loss of life. Because that's universal. And it is as the prayer says, the state of Israel is the first flowering of our redemption, but it is not our redemption. Our parsha today begins a new cycle of Torah observance. Indeed, our physical enemy, Hamas, they tried to take away the joy of Simchat's Torah by attacking us on that day. And it's right there in the name, Simchat, Simchat. You see, well, what they didn't, and maybe they're aware of this, we're about to begin a new cycle of the Torah. And maybe for a while, this is a new stage of Israel's history and existence as a people. But in truth, it's always just a passing stage. And we know that no matter what happens now, we have more that is to come, for better and for worse. We know that we have the promise of the Messianic era, but we also know that we might be looking at attacks on Yerushalayim in the future. We might be looking at some very hard days. And I'm not being pessimistic. I'm just quoting to you the words of the prophets. And I'm also being hopeful because we know that one day all of this will be passed. And the people of Israel, we will finally be in our full spiritual capacity as a spiritual priesthood to the nations. And we will truly be able to live out the Torah as it was handed down to Moshe Rabbeinu. And so it's a weird combination when I think of the future of both sadness and hope. But for the present, it's okay to be sad and to recognize that this current, that kind of a new stage in our history has begun along with a new Torah cycle. And I want to talk to us a little bit about our Torah cycle because our Torah cycle begins to lay out the kind of the, the pattern for redemption. How many of us know that? That the pattern of redemption was laid out in the lives of the patriarchs. Yes. Amen. In fact, we're not even in the lives of the patriarchs yet, and we're already starting to hit on the themes of the redemption that's going to come. And so a lot of what, we're, what we've been seeing in the news is rooted in this week's parsha. And so right off the bat, thank you, Gabriel, for stepping up to read uh, the Torah today for our first aliyah. Hashem is over the face of the waters. In the beginning, Hashem sold the heavens, or created the heavens and the earth. And he's over the waters, and there all around him is choshech, darkness. Tohu vavohu, darkness, chaos, and void. Now, if you're an ancient Canaanite, you say, oh, I know this story. This is where El defeats the great dragon um, Rahav. Um, and uh, this is how he, what he forms the earth out of. No, 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 not so. Not so. That's Canaanite religion. It's, it starts very similar, but the ancient Israelites had access to a truth that um, the ancient Canaanite world surrounding them uh, did not have access to. It was that Hashem reigns supreme over tohu, tohu vavohu, darkness and void. In fact, I like how Rashi puts it. He says that the spirit is not just a wind, which is how we often think of it as ruach, as a wind, but it's the breath of Messiah. Messiah sits enthroned above the waters, the spirit of Messiah, and as he breathes, it 
holds him above the waters, like a dove above the, above the waters. And you ask yourself, where does this image come from? Well, that word, it's, it's hover. It's not hover like some sort of UFO. It's hover like a little bird, like a dove. And so when I... When, when, when the uh, Rakha Kodesh shows up later on in the form of a dove, it's not a new image. It's actually rooted in the second passage, in the second verse of our, uh, of our portion, that the spirit of Hashem is over the waters and that that Ruach is a breath, the breath of Hashem over the waters. And why is Mashiach on a throne? Why is he on a throne? Because he reigns supreme. And does this remind anyone of what we just read in Tehillim 29? He sat enthroned over the waters. So understand that God reigns supreme over the forces of nature and over Tohu Vavohu, darkness and void. Choshek, darkness, chaos and void. And then Hashem just says, light be. Of course, that word for light is or, and people get weird with this, and they say, well, he was creating truth. Or, no. Or is just light. And or olam, light of the world. A supernatural manifestation of himself. He took out and he put it in the world. And it lit up the whole world supernaturally without the help of sun, moon, or stars. And you ask yourself, what is Mashiach? He is a manifestation of God, picked up and put into our world, the light of the world, a manifestation of Hashem himself. And from here, he begins to tame darkness. And we're not going to get into this. We know the story. First, he tames the darkness, um, the darkness with the light. Then he tames the waters. He separates water from water. He forms dry land. I'm sorry, he forms air. Then on the third day, he forms dry land and then, in the third day, he begins to bring about life. And he starts to bring forth plants and bushes and shrubs. And you can see, now he's working to populate and fill what he's created. Fourth day, he creates, um, I'm sorry, he creates uh, the, the, the stars and the moon and the sun. Fifth day, he creates the fish and the birds. And sixth day, he produces the animals. And understand that we are attempting to describe something supernatural. There's a lot that is being left unsaid. We're trying to wrap our mind around how Hashem creates the universe. And so first he, he tames darkness, and then he creates the stars, moon, sun to hold the darkness. And then he tamed the, 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 um, the air, I'm sorry, the air and the sea. That's why he creates the fish and the birds next. And then he uh, tamed the land and filled it with bushes and trees, and then that's why on the sixth day he creates um, all living creatures, including Adam and Chava. And on, and on Shabbat he rests from his labor. What was his labor? Well, he was speaking. He was creating. Malachah. And that's why on Shabbat it is forbidden to create. I, asked, I had a woman ask me once. She said, well, what if I just, I enjoy painting pictures. Is that wrong? I said, it's not the purpose of Shabbat. The purpose of Shabbat is not enjoyment and pleasure, although many forms of pleasure are encouraged or actually required. I said, the purpose of Shabbat is to refrain from creation and the act of creation. So things like writing and drawing are in some circles discouraged and in some circles outright forbidden. And that's why creating a fire is forbidden. It's the act of creation. And that's why in many Messianic Jewish circles, you find people don't even drive cars. Because that is the act of creation. It's creating the spark. And in many Jewish circles as well, I, I should say. Now, obviously, in our community, that's not an option. But if we were in a more urban environment, yeah, you'd find a lot of Messianic Jews walk to shul. But that is the work of creation. And the very act of creation laid out the template for the redemption. 
And the redemption of mankind can be found in the creation. And people have tried to equate different centuries with, um, I'm sorry, different millennia with different days of the week. I'm not going to get into it because I feel the logic can be very questionable. But I do think it's interesting to me that the third day is where we find life. Hashem creates two things on the third day, dry land and waters, and then he fills it with plant life. The third day, he actually creates life. And in the third century afterward, we find that's when Messiah Yeshua comes back to life. And when is, um, when is man and when are Adam and Chava created? Sixth day, which is where we find ourselves now, the sixth century. We can see this as the fullness of the man Messiah is formed in the nation of Israel in the sixth millennia. At least that's how we hope it works out. Then we get to go into the seventh millennia and rest. But that's not the part I want to talk about today. Because in the ancient Israelite world, the ocean is the abyss. It's Gehenna. It's the, it's the realm of spirits once you go down there. Because who knows how far down it goes. It goes down miles and miles, maybe forever. In the ancient Israelite word, world, we recognize that the waters are just waters. But down there, that's the abyss. And in an ancient superstitious world like the Canaanite world, it truly is the realm of demons. And you even see that imagery coming back in the New Testament. And what happens is, um, what Hashem has done is he's tamed darkness, he's tamed water. But we're going to find out there's a theme of these things coming back again and again and again. Where did it go wrong? I'm glad you asked. It goes wrong in Bereshit chapter 3. And you see here, what Hashem has done is he has brought two human beings to the mountain of Hashem. Now, you might say, wait a minute, the mountain? What are you talking about? Isaiah makes it clear, and in the ancient Canaanite world, it's clear that the Garden of Eden is on a mountain. Not a normal mountain, a supernatural mountain. Because in the ancient Canaanite world, life is very hard. So a life of the gods would be where we don't have to eat, or where we don't have to work to eat, where we don't have to work to have water. It's like a garden. And so when God brings them into a garden, the whole world understands when they're reading the Torah, okay, this is the realm of God. But it gets more specific than that. He brings them up on top of the mountain, the mountain of God. You were in Eden, the mountain of God. It's the mountain. And in the ancient Canaanite world, the mountain is the intersection between heaven and earth. And he brings them up to his mountain, the supernatural realm. Which mountain? I'm glad you ask. All of our sages agree it was Mount Moriah. Okay? It wasn't Mount Horeb. It wasn't Mount Ararat. It wasn't one of those mountains. It wasn't a mountain that doesn't exist. It's Mount Moriah. It's the Temple Mount. Wow, it's like that place never stopped being controversial. <laughs> and because Adam and Heva don't have sin, but because they are flawed human beings who are made out of dirt, understand that they are drawn naturally to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Mankind always wants more knowledge, even, dare I say, forbidden arcane knowledge. That's a problem we find in the Messianic world. Forbidden knowledge that we don't, that Hashem has said is off limits to us. We say, oh, let's go there and start questioning. And so we find out that there were eons past before Bereshit chapter 1, verse 1. Well, what was going on then? And I say, forbidden knowledge. It's not given to man. What's given to man is found in the pages of Torah. So we are forbidden from questioning the early things. What we are given is Bereshit chapter 1, verse 1 onward. We're allowed to deal with this. Man is drawn to secret, arcane knowledge. And Adam and Heva are no exception. In some ways, this is good. This is what makes us human. In some ways, this is bad because it's when we want to break down forbidden gates. A serpent invited Adam and Chava to partake in eating fruit, forbidden fruit. And just long story short, Adam and Chava brought the darkness back into the world. The Tohu and the Vohu, they return, and this time with a vengeance. And now every world, every aspect of man's relationships 
has been distorted. His relationship with one another, okay, Adam and Cheva, they're married, they have a perfect relationship. Now, there's a severing in the relationship. Now, Cheva is subservient to Adam. Oh, but Adam's relationship with the earth is also distorted because um, now he has to work until the ground. He can't just pick from fruit and eat it. He now has to work the crops. His relationship with Hashem has been twisted and distorted. And finally, the last relationship, his relationship within himself, is ruined. And his eternal life that he would have had otherwise, now he will die. So time and space have all been distorted. And what we're going to see in Bereshit chapter 4 and chapter 5 is that the relationships between man and man just keep getting worse and worse. And Bereshit chapter 4 establishes one of the most important themes of the Torah. It establishes the theme of fighting brothers. And unfortunately, this shows the, the, the fate of all those that are not a part of Israel. Because you see, in the future, we're going to see strife between Yitzhak and Ishmael. But they resolve at the death of their father, Avraham. We see conflict between Esau and Yaakov, but they resolve. And then they bury their father together. We see conflict between Yosef and his brothers, but they resolve. And they bury their father together. You see, in the house of Yisrael, there is conflict between brothers. And it leads sometimes to a lot of suffering, but there is resolution. End of story. Cain kills Hevel. Cain is exiled. And that's the end of it. Hevel's blood cries from the ground against Cain. Now Cain can no longer claim, uh, now can, can no longer work the ground. He is a restless wanderer. And his family line is wiped out. Such is the fate of those who don't receive the promise. Such is the fate of those who who are not a part of the promise. And yet, the story is not truly over because Adam and Cheva have another son, Shet. Better be careful how I say that. Shet. <laughs> Seth. And thus, the seed is allowed to continue. And the Messianic promise is allowed to continue. And so, right now, for the present moment in our parasha, it seems like conflict is only going to get worse and worse and worse. And we, we see that later on with Lamech. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, well, we see it with Lamech. And by the, you know, just a few generations after Chaim, we see Lamech is already making promises. If Cain is avenged seven, I'm sorry, is, if, if Ken is ave uh, Cain is avenged then I am, uh, by seven times, then I'm avenged seven times seven. We see that themes of wrath, have, and revenge have already taken place in the hearts of men. We see that um, Lamech is a polygamist. So already it's gone from, you know, a distorted relationship between Adam and Cheva, and now we're already looking at polygamy. We see the relationship between man and woman has only gotten worse. And we see that in the life of Noah, it's going to become so bad that it is worse than the modern day. How do I know? Actually, I'm sorry, it is only comparable to the modern day. Because by the time of Noah, all mankind has been wiped out. The land and the animals are twisted and warped. And now we live in an age of pollution where we have destroyed not only each other, but animals. We have driven out a huge amount of the native species that we were told to take care of into extinction. And now we're actually becoming worse because we have done it to the fish. We have destroyed... We have destroyed animals, we have destroyed nature, we have destroyed the oceans. Uh, God just looked at the people before the flood and they had only destroyed the earth and each other, so he had to wipe that part out. They hadn't even gone into the realm of the waters. In many ways, we are worse. Our portion does not end happily. It shows the beginning of the struggle. And yet there is a promise in Scripture of the seed the seed of the woman, the seed survives through one man, Noach, and it goes into Shem, and it goes into Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, and then it goes into Yehuda. 
But the promise I want to focus on today is the next verse, actually, in our series. It took a while to get there, but we're getting there. Blessed are those who mourn, for you shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. You see, the people who are mourning under the weight of sin and suffering that was brought back into the world through Adam, I'll put the blame on Adam, not Cheva, the people who suffer because of Adam's transgression, they have the promise that you are mourning now, but you will be comforted. And I look out at the world right now and I can say, we are mourning right now, but we know that in the Messianic era, we will be comforted. Messiah Yeshua will reign on the earth, on the throne of his father David, from Yerushalayim. All the nations will be subjected to Yerushalayim. They will learn Torah on Mount Zion. And we will finally have peace. And all of the, the curse that was brought about through Adam will be finished. And then I look out and I say, what is this, what is this conflict about? Well, it's about land. Scripture says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. I'm going to get more into this passage next week, I believe. But understand the meek is not just someone who's kind of sad and frumpy. The meek refers to the humble of the land. It is the select remnant, and they are referred to constantly over the course of Tanakh. And so understand that the meek will inherit Haaretz, the land of Israel. In the Messianic Jewish community, if we observe Torah, if we, if we follow Messiah Yeshua and his teachings, we will be counted among the meek, who will get to inherit the land of Israel. And we'll get more into that. But I can look at that and say, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are the elect, for they will inherit the land. All these horrible people like Hamas, I just said Hamas, I, think it's, I don't know if it's Hamas or Hamas. Hamas, they won't inherit the land. Even if they conquer for a day, it is to, to the meek that the land will go. That tells me something. Not by strength, not by might. So not even the IDF and all of their power and their advanced technology, their spyware, their missiles, not even the IDF can gain the land back. It is only found in Messiah Yeshua that the land can be restored, that land where Mount Moriah was, that the whole curse took place, took got a grip of the whole world. It has, how can we bring wholeness to the world? It has to be brought to the place where it went wrong. Only Messiah Yeshua raiding on top of that mountain where the whole story went wrong to start with can bring peace to the whole earth. That's why these verses are so significant. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Will be. We're not talking some hopeful tomorrow. We're talking the Messianic era. We're talking the world that is coming. We're talking it will happen. And when I say blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land, understand that word should be ha'aret, it's land. They will receive an allotted portion along with Abraham and all of his descendants. Guys, this, what we saw this week is not the end. It is tragic. It is sad. It is another continued theme in brother fighting brother, Palestinian, the descendants of Ishmael fighting the, sons, the descendants of Yitzhak. It is the descendants of Esau fighting the descendants of Yaakov. But the story is not over. We still have the messianic promise. And so when I come in here and I say, Oh, say shalom, be mermav, hu ya say shalom, aleinu. I am not being arbitrary. I'm not saying, can you make peace for us, please? We are declaring that Hashem will make peace in this world. It is a declaration. It is a fact. When I say Shabbat shalom, I'm wishing you to have the peace of Shabbat. Of Shabbat and I'm also wishing you the peace of Olam Haba, the world to come. Who does it come from? It comes from Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. We're going to end our service today with a what I believe is a prophetic promise. Odevinu Chai, Am Yisrael Chai, still our Father lives, 
still the nation of Yisrael lives. We will not die here, neither will Hashem. Instead, we'll go on another day, and we'll go through what we have to go through, light versus darkness, chaos and void versus order, brother versus brother, life, death, the results of the curse, people getting worse and worse with each passing generation, but also the promise of Mashiach. And this portion portrayed to us through Noah, who brings us rest. So take comfort, take joy, Mashiach will be here next year. I'm quoting something else. Just ignore me. Um, <laughs> have no fear. Mashiach will be here next year. Does Who here knows that song? It's not saying Mashiach will really be here next year, but what it's saying is the coming of Messiah is intimate. Yes, amen. It's always a pressing reality. And every year that we do not bring Mashiach back, <coughs> the fault falls on us. <coughs> have no fear. Mashiach will be here next year. Guys, we have a very real hope. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not arbitrary. It's not conceptual and it's not theoretical. It is concrete. It is a reality. And one day we will be living in it. One more thing I'll say is this congregation, we have had an unusual amount of dreams for the last five months. Ominous nightmares. People come up to me. Quit and I saw this, I saw this. I'm like, yeah, someone, so-and-so saw this too. We've seen this. We've, we've, we've been responding to it. We've known it. I'm going to tell you, the reality, we knew that we would cross the threshold one day into something. And likewise, I'm telling you right now, we will cross the threshold into the redemption. We will cross the threshold. And when it's here, it's here. When it's here, it's here. And it will come. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the land. Next week, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for sadaka, for they shall be filled. Let's go ahead to page 162. Let's go to page 164. Can Teddy, you, you can, if you'll take over when I'm done. Mm -hmm. Let's go and stand up. Aleinu l'shvech l'dohon hakol L'teik yudula lo yotze v'reishi Shelo asani gavarto Olo samanu k'mishpacho adama Shelo sam kelkenu kahen V'goho aleinu k'kol hamona V'nachnu korim Yimishakabim umadim L'ifnei melek ma'pein lakim Hakadosh baruchu Shabbat <laughs> 
And so we hope in you, Adonai our God, soon to see the glory of your might, removing idols from the land, from the earth, and banishing false gods, fixing the brokenness of the world so that it would be God's kingdom. All humanity will call your name, and all of the wicked of the earth will turn toward you. All who live in the world would know and understand that every knee must bend to you, and every tongue must promise loyalty. They will bow to you, Adonai our God, honoring the glory of your name. All will accept your authority, and the time will come soon when you will rule over them forever. For the world is your kingdom, and you will always rule over it in glory. That is, as it is written in the Torah, the ruler shall rule forever and ever. And the prophet Zechariah said, then God will be ruler over all the earth. On that day, God will be one, and God's name will be one. I'd like to point out to us the words Shalom Asani Kit Goye Haaratot. You did not make us like the other families of the earth, like the other nations of the earth. That's what we're talking about in today's Torah portion. Cain and Hevel, you have death. Brothers fight, there's death. But in the context of the covenant of Abraham, brothers can fight and there will be restoration. And that's what we're talking about today the restoration. I'm going to say, everyone, stay standing. We're all going to say the Kaddish today, the Kaddish. Because we're going to say it in solidarity with the people who have died in Israel. Amen. Amen. Yiparach, Bishabach, Bipaar, Bimamam, Binase, Bitadar, Bitale, Bitalam, Shemade Kucha, Rivu. Let a long mean Kubikta, the Shiata, Tushukata, the Nekwanta, Dahiram Bahama, Rivu, Amen. Yehe, Shema, Raba, Mean Shemaya. Bechaim, Alenu, Beachat, Israel, Rivu, Amen. O say, Shalom, Bimam, U, Yase, Shalom, Alenu. Israel, Amen. And there be a peace from heaven, like first and foremost, we'll say Amen. And then when there's peace in the high heavens, make peace first and foremost, we'll say Amen. 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 We're going to go ahead and finish up with a song today that we don't usually finish up with, just again in solidarity. Uh, solidarity. Ode Avinu Chai. Am Yisrael Chai. Ode Avinu Chai. Ode Avinu Chai. Oh, da vinu, oh, da vinu, oh, da vinu, hai. Oh, da vinu, hai. Oh, da vinu, hai. Oh, da vinu, oh, da vinu, oh, da vinu. Oh, da vinu chai, oh da vinu chai, oh da vinu chai, oh da vinu chai, oh da vinu chai. Still our Father lives, still the people of Israel live. You're dismissed in the grace and peace of our Master, Yeshua the Messiah. 
十秒チャンス。